should probably expect spoilers. I don't know about you, but I feel there'd be no better way to kick off a brand new show and to base the first episode on a character with the strongest kicks in the world. She's the iconic queen of fighting games and the first lady of the beat em up genre. Who that? It's Chun Li. Chun-Li is one of those characters that I really like and I'm always glad to see her make an appearance in a video game. But I absolutely royally suck playing as her and I'm not even sure why that is. Though it might be due to the fact that I just suck at fighting games in general. Thankfully this show isn't about how I feel when playing as a character so I've dodged some bullets there. What I am here to do is take a look at a character's design and talk crap about that instead. Now before we get into this, let's take this opportunity to bring ourselves up to speed on who Chan Li is and what her backstory is about, just so we're all on the same page. Chan Li is what most would consider the main female leading protagonist for the Street Fighter series of fighting games. She is an agent of the international police organization known as Interpol and is on the hunt for her father's killer, or at least she was for the most part. Throughout her earlier travels in the series, Chun Li's investigations led her to this prick called M. Bison, the guy responsible for murking Chun Li's dad in the first place. This caused Chun Li to seek vengeance for much of her earlier story. And yeah, it's a cliched revenge story, but you know, eh. She eventually succeeds in crushing M. Bison and his crappy organization before retiring from street fighting altogether, though she often found herself being drawn back into the thing for one reason or another. The thing that always really struck me as absolute dumb on M. Bison's part was that he kills Chun Li's father, then when he goes on to host the Second World Warrior Tournament in Street Fighter 2, he invites Chun Li to it. Like, you serious? Look, 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 okay. A stereotypical revenge story, I can get behind that. They make perfect sense. They might be a bit cliched, but they make sense. No, what doesn't make sense is M. Bison kills a guy, so now that the guy's daughter is angry and hunting M. Bison down, and Mr. Bison's bright idea is to invite this woman to his tournament? Do you know how dumb that is? Let me give you an alternative example here so you can see what I'm talking about, okay? You're in the playground. You're 10 years old, you're in the playground. You're playing with your Pokemon cards. Some kid turns up with a Charizard card. A shiny Charizard card. What do you do with that card? You take it from them, rip it up, throw it back in their face and you peace out. Then what you do, two months later, you invite that person to your birthday party in McDonald's. That's exactly the same shit going on here. But anyway, brief backstory out of the way. It's time to really get into the nitty gritty now. So let's make like Chun Li's thighs and dive into the thick of it. Did I really write that down? Visual design. Chun Li's standard and most recognized look is that of her custom cut Chinese dress. And I say custom cut because the dress she's wearing has been altered and trimmed short to allow better use of her legs during combat because everybody knows she kicks like a horse and she doesn't want her dress getting in the way when she's kicking like a horse. What I like about this version of the dress is the overall tailcoat shape it seems to give to her outward appearance. And I might just be a sucker for tailcoats, I don't know, but I just really like the way it hangs behind her like that. When she's in motion and dropping a lightning kick, that tailcoat just flicks back and just gives her kicks that all the more visual power to them. And it's probably my favourite part of her whole outfit. What I find interesting about her outfit though is how she can take a Chinese dress, throw combat boots in with it, and then to round off the whole look she wears bracelets that are so metal I half expect someone to rip into an air guitar solo every time she fires off a kikosho. <laughs> 
seriously, you've probably never noticed it, but she's wearing wrestling boots with a Chinese dress and punked out bracelets here. And the reason you've probably never taken those things into consideration is because Chun-Li is able to wear all of these contrasting things and make it look so good that we never question how out of place they technically are with each other. Well, it's either that or we're too busy talking about her thighs. Speaking of which, let's talk about them then, shall we? I love them. No, I don't care how ridiculous they can look sometimes. I just love the fact that while there are female characters out there and their breasts are getting bigger in every single game, in the Street Fighter universe, the biggest thing going on is Chun-Li's thighs. And what it is, I just love the fact that it's also story canon and she takes great pride in them and she trains regularly to keep them in the perfect shape they are. Not just to look good, but because she needs to pack a lot of that power into those kicks of hers. And without wanting to overuse a tired internet meme here, but Chun-Li never skips leg day. Actually, I, I kind of think every day for Chun-Li's leg day. What I want to know is how does Chun-Li buy clothes? Like seriously. I mean, I'm an average build guy, but I'm blessed with thick thighs and, you know, it makes my jeans look a bit tighter than they're supposed to be. But for her, can you imagine her buying a pair of Levi's? I can't. Either way though, her design has become incredibly iconic with the series she comes from. She is instantly recognisable and rightfully so. I think her design is great and I personally wouldn't change a thing. Personality. I know it's common standard for characters in fighting games to walk around with an ego, but Chun-Li plays it off more in the pride atmosphere rather than being straight up egotistical. She will beat you up and she might diss you about it afterwards, but she kinda gives off the vibe that smack talk ain't really her thing, she just can't help it that you suck so much. The one thing that she did become adamant about was being the self-proclaimed strongest woman in the world, mainly because every time she busted up someone's face she would let them know. It's not so much as chatting breeze to her defeated opponent as it is more about making a statement and making sure it gets remembered. What was interesting about it though was since she had the skills to actually back up such a claim, the rest of the characters in the series also began to believe this, and that includes the antagonists. The thing that I really love about Chun-Li's personality though is, underneath all that tough proud exterior, there's this girl sitting there who really just wants to laugh and have some fun. I imagine Chun-Li feels like she has to be serious a lot of the time because of her work and the situation she finds herself in, but whenever she jumps for joy at the end of a fight, it's that playful side that creeps out a little bit. I mean, the most proudest and headstrong she's ever been is during Street Fighter 3, especially since she ends up taking on a somewhat motherly role to a lot of orphan kids. Her priorities are more demanding than ever by this point, and the fact that she still sometimes jumps around all excitedly means that her fun-loving carefree side is still there well into her later years and is probably not going to be going anywhere anytime soon either. To know that she has kept that side of her well into her later years, I find to be quite endearing and quite sweet. Important. Well, she is literally the first ever playable female character in a one-on-one -on -one fighting game and set a standard for all other fighting games to follow from there on out. So, you know, that is pretty big thing, Zaguan. But what does she bring to the universe she inhabits? Well, for starters, she was one of the fighters introduced to Street Fighter 2 with an actual legit reason to be in the tournament with some worthy motives behind her. Chun Li doesn't go to the tournament to win some crappy trophy and a title, okay? She's there to tear the whole tournament up and absolutely rip the head off the guy who's hosting it. Another thing worthy of note is that she actually grew with the series. She could have ended up being stuck as a revenge fueled police lady chasing off the M. Bison's smelly bum for another 50 games, but Capcom made a good call by setting Street Fighter 3 after the fall of Shadowloo. This way, we can see how Chun Li had grown since those earlier days, and in her older years, she's passing on her teachings to the next generation. Not only was she incredibly important in the overall fall of Shadowloo, lame SIN subcompany included, but she developed enough as a character to reach a stage where she could teach what she has learned to others. She essentially went from pupil to teacher over the course of the series, and there's not really that many other characters in Street Fighter who achieved such a thing. I mean, when Capcom made like three different versions of Street Fighter 3, it was on the third one that they decided to bring Chun-Li back. They could have brought back any character, any character from their whole catalogue, and they bring back Chun-Li because she really is that important. There is absolutely no denying Chun-Li her spot on the throne. 
She has been around from day dot and has continued to earn her keep the entire time she's been here. She's never really had an out of character moment and she has been incredibly consistent in showing us who she is and what she's about. And I can say without a single doubt that the whole world of Street Fighter would be missing something exceptionally elegant and powerful if she wasn't here. And that's why Chun-Li gets the Valhar emblem because Digi Valentine loves Chun-Li and I hope to see her lightning kicking bitches for another 20 years to come.